Today, I'm going to show you how to take music that's been written in triplet time and convert it to 6 8 or 12 8 without having to replay any parts. Let's do it. Now, some of you are probably thinking, what am I ever going to need to convert triplets into 12 8 or 6 8? If you ever do a movie about pirates, you're gonna need to know this trick. Now, not too long ago, I was working on a film that had zero pirates, but it had a lot of triplets and a lot of 6 8 and a lot of 12 8, which, from a listening perspective, is no difference. But if you try to use a part that's written in triplet time and put it into something else that was written in 12 8 or 6 8, well, they, they don't match up. The sequencer doesn't see them the same way, and that's where the real problem lies. After moving notes around one by one or replaying the parts, I thought, got to be a better way. So I did this. First, listen to this bit of MIDI that's written in 4-4 triplet time. Now, if I want to use that in a piece of music that's written in 12-8 or 6-8, I can't. I have to either replay the part or I have to move every single note. Or I can do a bit of math, put it in a script, and let Cubase do the work for me, which is what I did. See, Cubase already gave us scripts for double tempo and half tempo. And I realized that the triplet and the eighth note differ by a factor of 1.5. So substituting that value instead of double or half allows us to transform MIDI and any associated automation on the fly. Let me show you. OK, 1.5 there, 1.5 there. Now what we're doing is we're changing the length by one and a half times and stretching out the position by one and a half times. Hit apply. And then if I just change this signature to 12.8. Now of course I have to drag out the region here. I'm done. Now listen to this. So what's the problem now? We converted the MIDI to 1.5 times slower and the position to 1.5 times slower. So to compensate, we have to convert the tempo 1.5 times higher. So we take 120 times 1.5 equals 180. Now you have it in 12.8. If you're notating this on paper, you just write dotted quarter equals 120 and be done. Cubase, you got to kind of trick it a little bit. So you have to stay with quarter note equals 180, which means dotted quarter equals 120. But it's easy math. It's You can do it in your head. So, OK, so we know it works. Let's build it from scratch and see really why it works. OK, first we're going to open the logical editor. Now. We want to transform the notes. So we select type is equal to note. Kind of nice default there. But we also want CC, automation, sustain pedal, and everything else. So we're going to add a second line. That is type is unequal to note. Now all that means is if it's a note, if it's not a note, whatever it is, we're going to change it. But to do that, we have to change this to or. So that either of these statements is true, the script executes. Next, down here, we're going to insert transformation. This is length multiply by 1.5. This makes the length of every event 1.5 times longer. But we also need to change where those events are positioned. So we go to position, multiply by, and again, 1.5. Then just click apply. And of course, I change the um, sound of the click up here to that. That gives me one click every three beats. So it works great, right? A lot of work for one region, true. But I didn't write that script to work on one little region. I wrote it so I could do this. I want to be able to convert entire arrangements. Listen to this. so on and so forth. Now, this will work, but I have to clean up the MIDI first. 
And what I mean by that is all of the MIDI has to start at the same spot and it all has to be glued together. If I don't, it Cubase just doesn't do the math correctly. Let's open up the logical editor. The script that we built earlier is called 44 to 12 8. I've saved it as that anyway. And we just hit apply. Now, as you can see, all the regions have to be dragged out again. Now that all the MIDI is where it should be, let's go turn this into 12 8 and convert the tempo to 180. And Okay, so you probably noticed all that dragging of MIDI regions out was a little time consuming. So I, yes, wrote another little script. This one's in the project logical editor. I wrote it, I call it double length of MIDI parts. Very straightforward. Container type equal to part. That's what all those guys are over here. Media is equal to MIDI. I don't want audio or anything else. And property is selected. We wanna make sure that it's selected. Otherwise it'll do the entire session. We don't want that. The script is set to uh, double the length of the parts. We're gonna change that to 1.5 so it matches the rest. We're gonna hit apply. There's all of my work done. Now, I can have that as two separate scripts. Like there, here is the logical editor with the first one. And here is the uh, second one in project logical editor that doubles the length of the parts, or actually in this case makes them 1.5 times as long. Or you can do this, which is combine that stuff into a macro. Yes, this is all about saving time. The fewer clicks I have to do, the better. And I got into a point where I was doing this so much that I needed to make it one button. So macros are here. At the bottom of the key commands window, if it's not already shown, there's a little button here that says show macros. We can create a new macro. We're gonna call this triplets for YouTube. All right, then we need to find our first script, which was the 4.4 to 12.8. And there's that one, right? And then we can go add, there's that guy there. Then we need our second script, which is double length, double length of MIDI parts right there. And we're gonna add that one. We say, okay. I can get rid of these guys. Let's undo all the stuff I did here. Select that. Go to macros and uh, triplets YouTube. All done. Okay, so I know all of that was a very specific kind of situation. 12, 8, 6, 8, triplets, whatnot. Pirate movies. But here's the deal. The take home is using things like logical editor, project logical editor, uh, the macros to bundle together your tasks into these complex workflows. And if you add something like keyboard maestro or auto hotkey, well, then you're cooking. So listen, I'll do more of these later. Uh, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.